Hey, what's going on guys? It's White Gaming back again with some more Generation Zero. And today we're doing something a little bit different. The Landfall update came with a whole host of changes, some of which you may not have noticed unless you've been following the dev letters. Then uh, there's a few extra little things in here that will help players out in combat, especially in those urban territories around the villages and the buildings. And those are electric boxes, gas canisters or fuel tankers, whatever you want to call them. And alongside that, you've obviously got the petrol stations and the cars. Now, today I'm going to show you a few of the best ways you can use those things. They are so much fun and they really, really help out with that guerrilla warfare element of the game. Especially if you want to sneak up, play some traps. These things help you so much. They also save you ammo and some of them have the ability to disable enemies, which will give you that little bit of extra time just to either heal up or, you know, reload your weapons if you're in a fight and you are outnumbered. If that sounds good to you, subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video. Let's do it. So first things first are these electric boxes. You can find these dotted all over the map. They are everywhere, on the side of houses, on the side of factories, and some of them just dotted randomly in the streets. There are uh, several different variants of them, but they all look pretty similar to the ones that you've been seeing on the screen. They are so cool, and what they do is shock the enemies. Now, you can get a little shot on even on some of the bigger machines, providing they're in the vicinity. The only downside to these is you do have to get the machines relatively close for it to work. And they are quite fragile, so if you do have a machine blow up next to one when you're planning on uh, bringing over some other machines, then you're, yeah, you, you've wasted it, and uh, now you've got to shoot the crap out of everything that comes close to you. But they are really good to use, and they're really helpful. As you can see, you know, just throw something out at them, uh, let the enemies come towards them, shoot them, bish, bash, bosh, you have then disabled the enemies nearby for about three to five seconds. It does work on the bigger enemies as well, so the tanks, the wolves, the harvesters, works on all the machines, and it just gives you that little bit of extra time to sort of get your head around things, either reload or just get into a nice position where you've got yourself some nice cover. They are brilliant, brilliant pieces, and I'm so glad they've added so much more of them. Before they were just dotted around randomly, now they're on pretty much every single building. The downside is you do have to find them on that building. Um, but when you do find them, they are really, really cool. Next up are these gas canisters, or fuel tankers, whatever you want to call them. Depending on where you are in the, in the game, you will find different variants of these. So if you're in the bigger towns and cities, you'll find the smaller half-sized ones. But then out on big farms, there's normally one or two big ones dotted around by the barns. And they come in the explosion sort of standard red ones. And then you've got white ones as well that are dotted around, which are sort of concussion. They don't. I don't really see much use in the white ones. I haven't found much of a use. Obviously, the big red ones, they are brilliant. Unfortunately, though, the blast radius, from what I can see and feel isn't as big as you'd think. So shooting the red canisters that you can pick up and drop, they seem to have a little bit more of an effect. But if you are in a combat situation and you're stuck somewhere and there is one nearby, obviously they help out a lot. And with runners and hunters and stuff like that, if you've got a load nearby and they haven't noticed you yet, chuck a radio down or chuck a flare down by one of those and let the hunters, harvesters, whatever it may be, shoot them for you and damage themselves in the process. It does work really, really nicely and just gives that little bit of an extra boost towards damage. And um, even the explosion itself is, is quite cool. Just watching them go bang is awesome. If you're in a location where there's quite a few nearby themselves, then they will obviously chain that, which is, it works really well. Which will bring us on to our next point, which is vehicles. Um, obviously, if you've got vehicles nearby, they also help. It really, really does help when you've got a big chunk of machines. Obviously, one or two machines and the big petrol tanks is not really too useful. But as you can see here, when you've got a bunch of harvesters and stuff like that coming at this one location, it does work really well. Now, you've obviously got the smaller, thin cylindrical cans as well, which are based primarily inside factories. The downside to those is obviously you've got to get a machine inside. But if you are in an area where they're coming towards the door, normally they are located by doors and that blast radius isn't contained within the walls so if there is one on the outside of the building you will still give him that little bit of damage so they're not completely redundant 
and they are quite fun just to blow up anyway. Uh, it's quite cool just to watch everything go bang, especially in the factories, because you end up sometimes getting gas canisters and the white ones as well, the concussion ones, which are quite cool, quite cool. But the blast radius on those smaller ones is quite big, so make sure you step back, otherwise you're going to be injuring yourself too. And next up is vehicles. Vehicles are everywhere in this game. They have had a little bit of a buff in the recent years, so beforehand you could literally tickle a car and it would go bang. But now you do need to put a few rounds into it. I've noticed with the PVG, if you're aiming at the bonnet, you can end up putting three, maybe four rounds in and then it'll go bang. But if you are trying to get that sneak approach, by the time you've put those, those first two rounds in, the machines are already running towards you. They are fast and they are sneaky little devils, so you do need to be a little bit quicker. But if you are in the vicinity and you don't mind taking damage yourself, you can just shoot the crap out of them. I personally like to use a grenade when there's vehicles, because that grenade will take out loads. And especially in the bigger urban cities such as Ostervik and, oh no, I forgot it now, the one at the top of the map in the north coast region. And that one there, you can find, as you can see, a nice line of cars and loads of cars dotted around them. And because of that chain effect and the blast radius that cars do have, it works really, really well. You get some machines in a nice little pattern around there, hit one of those cars, everything around you is going up. But you will take a little bit of damage if you're too close. But like I said, with the grenades, it works really, really nicely. But you can use flares and stuff like that as well, get the machines to shoot the cars and do the job for you. It does work semi well, getting them to do that. I do prefer just, like I said, grenade, straight in the middle, bish bash bosh. Another upside to blowing up cars is you haven't got to open all the doors to search for the loot, so it does work really well. The only downside to blowing them up before you search them is any loot that is in the, under the bonnet, so in the engine compartment, uh, that does disappear, so you won't be able to get the steel, the gas canisters, the batteries, that kind of stuff. That does disappear as soon as you've blown a vehicle up, so if you are searching for stuff like that, definitely go and get them before you blow the cars up. The cars will still blow up once you've searched them, so it does work out nicely. And finally, we have gas stations. This one is a little bit hit and miss. Um, from what I've seen with the gas stations, they can work really well, but they also can be completely pointless. The explosion is nowhere near as big as what you'd think for a gas station. I was hoping um, I, th I think it's been nerfed a bit because they used to be massive, but now they're not the greatest, but they do work. Obviously, if you're in little cities, like oh, if you're in Grappamar, there's normally a lot of machine spawns around the actual petrol station, or in on Himfal, the main town there, the, the fuel station there is normally really packed. Hunters, harvesters, loads of good stuff around that area. Not harvesters, sorry, hunters and runners. Um, so getting them in that area, throwing a flare in, letting them shoot the petrol station up, it really, really does work. It's a nice, simple way of just getting that extra bit of damage in, especially just using that terrain around you. It works really, really well. Normally as well, you'll find a lot of vehicles inside the gas stations. Sorry, I keep switching between gas and petrol. Um, it's because, yeah, you know, why not, right? Why not? Uh, <laughs> but because they're... The vehicles are there, you can get that real big extra burst of, uh, of an explosion. And that splash damage from the vehicles and the gas stations combined can do quite a bit of damage. The only downside to the fuel stations is that when you're shooting them, they take quite a beat of just as much, if not more, than the cars. So, once again, grenades, or if you really want to go that sneaky, sneak over there first, place a gas canister down back to where you want to be firing from, then chuck your flare when it goes in. Bring everybody to that location. And it just, the explosion that you'll get, and the damage to the machines is really, really quite nice. The good thing about Grappamar is you can occasionally get harvesters just wandering right around that street section just in front. And their spawns for the hunters tends to be obviously in a four point around them on their legs. And normally, one or two of them will land in the gas station. So you wait for that to come down, shoot whatever you need to shoot that's in there, whether you, that be your gas canister that you've placed, or the vehicles that are in there, and you're getting a big chunk of damage. A massive chunk. It works really, really well. But, guerrilla combat overall in the game has just improved. 
I feel like with this update, the gorilla combat in the game has improved overall, especially with the weapon wheel being able to place so many different items down and really sneak up on the enemy and get the upper hand when you get and bring them down to their knees without them you know, from there. It's just a brilliant feeling. And these new parts just placed all over the map really, really help you do that. And I think that's brilliant. I love that urban side where we can sneak around and we can blow things up. Um, I'd love to see more in that way, some more traps. Um, being able to actually craft our own traps and place things down I think would be really, really cool. I'd love to see things like mines, not like um, the landmines that we've got, but sort of like claymores. I don't know if claymores are around at that point. But, you know, that kind of stuff would be really, really cool. Trip mines, everything along those lines I think would be absolutely amazing. Just being able to set up a line from one part, one tree over to another and then watch the machines run through it and blow up would be so, so cool. But for today, ladies and gentlemen, um, I am going to leave that there. That was my take on sort of guerrilla combat and the new situations that we've got. I am going to do further videos on this and just set up loads of different traps and go for stuff like that. I think it'll be really, really fun ambushing the enemies. If you've got any ambush techniques that you use yourself, let me know in the comments. If they're cool, I'll, uh, I'll put them together in a video and then uh, you'll get a shout out for it. Um, but also today, I've tried a different method of making content. Normally, I record and talk at the same time. So I'll be recording the part that I'm doing. It, it does help me a little bit because I can see what I'm doing as I'm talking about it. But now what I've done is, is just made some notes. Normally, I make notes anyway on the bigger videos and videos like this. Um, but I've made more notes this time and I'm doing a voiceover. So let me know how this format is for you guys if you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you think I could do it, if you prefer it the old way where I'm talking and playing at the same time, let me know. Um, but yeah, either way, let me know what you think down below. For today though, I've been Wyatt, you've been awesome, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on Wednesday, Generation Zero.